Yeah, Andrea, I think Steve set up this race here well, and that's why we wanted to make sure that we came here to Alabama. But I want to bring in Mo Brooks, the congressman here from northern Alabama, right away here. Because what is interesting is that two months ago, when Donald Trump unendorsed you, we have seen your poll numbers rise. Why is that, and what would your message be to President Trump right now? Well, before I touch on that, let me welcome you to the number one best place to live in the United States, according to U.S. News and World Report. You guys it's, also I, sure know how to make some hell of politics out of uh, out I, of I had to put that plug in. Uh, now, um, with respect to Donald Trump, he's his own man. He's going to do whatever he wants to do. Uh, we can't have a strategy based on what he may or may not do. Why did you go up in the polls in the last few months? Well, because we were able to, with our limited funds, start campaigning more aggressively. Uh, Katie Britt has tons and tons of special interest group money, Mitch McConnell money, just coming out the kazoo. She was able to launch her attacks early on, and we had no ability to respond. Now that we've gotten out that I'm the only conservative in this race, Katie Britt's not a conservative. Mike Durant, he's more of a John McCain style of Republican. That kind of messaging is what has caused voters to sit up and take notice. Mo Brooks is our guy. How is Donald, has Donald Trump's influence waned in the Republican Party? No, I don't think so. Uh, not at all. Uh, but no one has 100 percent influence. There are varying degrees of influence in different parts of the country. Uh, in the state of Alabama, by way of example, in I Senate races, he's endorsed two out of three times his endorsees have not done well. One out of three times they have done well. We tend to be a pretty independent group in the state of Alabama. Mike Durant said, told us last night that if it's you and Katie Britt that go to the runoff, he'll throw his support behind you. Are you willing to say the same if it's Mike Durant and Katie Britt? Will you throw your support behind Durant? Well, I think it's uh, as much chance as anything that it's going to be Mike Durant and I in the runoff. And I don't want to be endorsing my opponent in a runoff. I hope you can understand that. Uh, but we'll see how things play out. Uh, both of us have reached one certainty. Uh, Katie Britt has shown a remarkable de degree of dishonesty in this campaign. Her whole team has. And we don't want that in the United States Senate. I want to hit on a subject here because out of the three candidates, you are the one that has served in Congress here. And folks know you because you're one of the five Republican congressmen who's been subpoenaed by the January 6th committee here. There's a DOJ investigation underway into the January 6th attack here. What did you know, and are you willing to sit down for a deposition with the January 6th committee? Well, you've asked a bunch of different questions. Let me emphasize and underscore the first thing that you introduced us with. Of the people running the United States Senate on the Republican side, I'm the only one that has held any public office, elected office, okay? So I'm the only one with a track record. Will you sit down with the January 6th committee? Well, if they were to do it under terms and conditions that I believe are more appropriate, then certainly I'm willing to consider that more so than them trying to subpoena me in the midst of a campaign. Uh, they wanted me to be in Washington, D.C., taking up a full week last week. That wasn't going to cut it. They have to do this in public. This is the public's business. No more of this secret clandestine stuff where they leak information out. If congressmen want to question me, there needs to be congressmen, not their underlings. So will, will you tell me then, because I think the public has had a lot of questions. They heard what you said on January 6th there. When you took to the stage with body armor on and you said it's time to take names and kick ass. Why did you have body armor on that day? What did you know? Because of the threats that we had discerned related to what may transpire at the ellipse caused by Black Lives Matter or Antifa elements. It had nothing to do with pro-Trump supporters, not in any of the rallies I've ever heard about with Donald Trump has there been any violence that later on ensued. So to emphasize this point, when I got back to the Capitol where the actual violence occurred, I wasn't wearing my bulletproof vest. I'd taken it off. Never even occurred to me that what happened at the uh, United States Capitol would happen. Do you regret then stoking by using those words, by stoking the crowd there that ultimately led to that attack? Okay, well, you're distorting my remarks when you say that. Let's be real clear. We've had a Barack Obama federal judge who has entered a court order saying there is no plausible argument that can be advanced that my conduct had anything to do with the attack on the United States Capitol. That ends it, okay? But having I think said that, that no, is no, one, no, 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 let me finish my, my remarks. You're taking out a snippet out of one sentence in a two-sentence paragraph. Look at the preceding sentence that shows that I'm talking about the 2022 and 2024 elections and beating Republicans you said, in those elections. Congressman, you had said that people in the past had given their lives for this country Absolutely. and that people needed to be prepared to do the same. I was standing outside of the Capitol there that day. We were ill-equipped for what happened. There was an attack on the U.S. Capitol here, and clearly you had information that led you to put body armor on that day. Why did the rest of the public well, not know? 
of the information I'm talking about related to left-wing elements engaging in the kinds of attacks. So, so then why not finish. sit down with the January 6th committee? Why not let me finish my sentence, okay? But why not sit that, down with why, the committee Why not let me that? finish my sentence? Is that the way you're going to conduct this interview, is try to interrupt me every time I try to speak? If so, you go ahead and tell the camera what you think I ought to say. I'm interested as to why you will not sit down with the January 6th well, committee. I have, I have they tried have done to, hundreds of hundreds of interviews. I have tried to go through the steps that would be required. Most importantly, that it be done in public, that it not be secret and clandestine. So you would do a public hearing? That, you would sit down for one? There you go. You've interrupted me again. There are four parts to all this, and I get past one, sometimes two, and you interrupt me before I can conclude. But there's another bigger picture with respect to this January 6th committee. In my judgment, along with the other Republican colleagues, it is a propaganda effort. It is not an effort to discern the truth. If they really wanted to discern the truth, then they would have done what we've done throughout the history of the House of Representatives. We would have had a bipartisan committee where the Democrats select their people, Republicans select their people, and they combine so that you get all viewpoints from all the witnesses instead of it being a one-sided sham that is designed to impact the election you did it. in 2022. That's for, all it's about For the now. record, you didn't vote for the independent January 6th commission there. It and wasn't you, independent the way you, I looked you, at it. And it you, also was a sham because of the different procedures and processes you also, that were involved in there. You also told me just back two months ago that Donald Trump was still urging you to, quote, rescind the election in the fall of 2021, that he still believed that he was going to have a way back into the White House here. Did he ever acknowledge well, to you? Well, those aren't that exactly he, my words. You, you uh, kind of, maybe kind I didn't of hit the actual quote, but you did tell me that he wanted to rescind the election after Labor Day. Donald Trump did use in our conversations the word rescind, and he right. did talk about being reinstated. And if you'd had an election stolen from you, you would also want to be reinstated so that justice is done. What Donald Trump talked about with me is not illegal in any way, shape, or form, ever, although the news media seems to want to distort it that way. Did he ever acknowledge he has that he the right, He has the right to have his view, and his view is he ought to be reinstated because the election, in his view and mine, was stolen from him in November of 2020. Did he ever and the acknowledge evidence that is he overwhelming lost? to me. Did he ever? No. He's never said that to me that Joe Biden, if all the lawful votes cast by eligible American citizens were counted. Donald Trump has never said that Joe Biden won. And in my judgment, if only lawful votes cast by eligible American citizens were counted, then Donald Trump won the Electoral College. And if you want to spend an hour or two going through that, I'm more than happy to do so. But be ready for what you hear. I think that I'd be happy to sit off of camera here. I know we can't no, take everybody do it live on all camera. day. Have one of these we'll, shows. We'll have it. We'll, we'll go on camera and we'll have a nice we'll little sit down about, here. We'll were, talk you about the two, were you in the war room at the Willard we on January talk, 6th? No. We will talk about the 2005 bipartisan commission on federal election reform that warned us 17 years ago that elections were going to be stolen if we did not address these systemic flaws that the bipartisan commission on federal election reform identified bipartisan headed up by democrat jimmy carter president of the united states and by james baker former white house chief of staff so why don't y'all do your homework and read that report and see how the democrats exploited that in 2020 to steal an election the number one issue in that report was don't send out ballots where we don't have a good chain of custody so that we can't track who's actually casting them. Watch 2,000 Mules. For the record, Watch that documentary. That will go into that, and that will help explain why the mass mail out of ballots is so bad. For the record's sake here, and we'll toss it back to Andrea here, but there is no proof. The 2,000 Mules is not proof that the election was rigged or that it was stolen. Well, I didn't even there rely no, on that. And, and The big problem that I saw was the 800,000 to 1.7 million non-citizens that voted in 2020. That is there a is, big there issue. There is no proof that that Then you haven't done your homework. We will you sit literally down have not have, done your homework. Why not, six, look, why not sit look down Look at then the then National Voter Registration Act that makes it illegal, question. that makes it illegal for our voter my, registrars to require proof of citizenship question, before then. non-citizens register to vote. Why, why don't you look down, at Section 5 of that question. Act? Why not sit down with the January 6th committee and provide such evidence then? I have talked about terms and conditions, but the main thing is to make it public. We don't want to do any more of this stuff in secret, clandestinely, where the public cannot see what is truly going on and where the January 6th commission, which to me is a witch hunt committee uh, commission, gets out there, or committee, gets out there and leaks p bits and pieces in order to further a political agenda that may not have anything to do with the truth. So, folks, number one, if you want to do something with this witch hunt committee, make it public where the public can see what's really going on and seeing firsthand what the witnesses are testifying to. Don't do the public's business in secret.
Congressman Mo Brooks, thank you. One of five it's Republicans. It's animated. He's as one fiery of, as I've been with. One Good of, guy. One of five Republicans who have been subpoenaed by the January 6th Commission. Well, none I haven't of been who have, subpoenaed yet. Who have cooperated Wait a minute, yet I haven't here. been subpoenaed yet. I haven't been served anything. The January 6th committee says they have subpoenaed you. They haven't served me anything. Okay. The subpoenaing Congressman process Andrew, Congressman Mo Brooks said that he has not received the subpoena here, but potentially, if it's public, would sit down here. Uh, at the same time, he is potentially going to be in a runoff to be the next U.S. Senator and serve a six-year term. I think when we were talking about objection of the 2020 results, Andrea, he, you were the first House member to object to the 2020 election results here. Richard Shelby, the retiring Republican senator, did not object here. And this is a changing landscape here in 2022. And I hope this conversation confirms election. that we in Alabama, our state motto is we dare defend our rights. Congressman, thank you. Andrea?